Father, we thank you so much for your word, and we ask that you would speak to us this morning. Would it be your words, not mine, that are spoken? Amen. Amen. Um, just to stand up, I can see a few people that might not know who I am. I said at the beginning, I'm Charlie. I'm the, vi- uh, not vicar officially yet, the minister down at St. James's Church. Um, and I've come to share with you this morning to stand in the place of Gary. Um, so, we, I'm really excited to be dropping into your series that you're working through at the moment, Meals with Jesus. Um, and I've been having a dig through all the stuff that's planned and that you've done, and, and it's great. It's so good. Um, This week, we're thinking a little bit about community, but from what I understand, a couple of weeks ago, you started to ask, who is my neighbour? Who's that person right in front of us that that we might not have noticed, that we can engage with? Who does our welcome extend to? And then last week, um, there was some thought about who the world excludes, and that God includes all of us, that we come to God through grace not through anything that we've done, but through everything that Jesus has done, and ask the question, what does that mean about our welcome of others? And then this week, we're digging into community a little bit through this interaction from Jesus that Ian just brought us. We're going to ask, what do I need to do to welcome Jesus? And therefore, what do I need to do to welcome others, to create community? Just to recap, this point in the Gospel... Um, Jesus has been telling his followers that he welcomes everybody. He's talked to his disciples about the importance of loving enemies, and he's talked about judging others. And he's eaten with the sinners, with the tax collectors, the lowest of the low in community. It's a section of the gospel that really shows us what Jesus is all about. And now, in the passage that we're at, he accepts an invitation to the Pharisee, to Simon's house. And this is the exact opposite of him eating with the tax collectors. He's gone from eating a meal with the lowest of society to accepting a meal with the most important, the most powerful in society. But this morning, I want us to focus, and please don't hear heresy in this, but we're going to focus on the woman and what she does not so much on what Jesus does, although we're going to see Jesus working through her actions. So we learn right at the beginning of this story that the woman has found out where Jesus is. I've had a lot of my eyes, a lot of my eyes? My eyes opened a lot to this story as I've been digging into it in preparation, because I think I've probably read this wrong for a long time. In my head, she bursts into the scene and starts pouring out her tears, starts pouring out her perfume on Jesus. She appears midway into it. But actually, if you read properly, if you dig into it, it looks like she's been there right from the beginning. That's what Jesus tells us. She has been hearing, we can assume, Jesus is preaching. She's been hearing him preach about grace for sinners. She knows that he went and ate with the tax collectors. She's heard what he said. She's repented of her sins and accepted the way that Jesus is calling her to. She hasn't turned up and blasted into the scene as a surprise. She's been there in the room from the minute Jesus walked in because she wanted to see him. She wanted to get close. And the main thing I want us to draw out from this passage this morning is to contrast her behaviour and the Pharisees' behaviour. And hear what Jesus says to us about eating meals, making community, welcoming others into our world. When Jesus entered the house, Simon didn't do what he was meant to. In that culture, he should, Jesus should have been met um, with a kiss, normally on the cheek, a kiss of welcome. And then they would have been seated on stools around a table, and they'd have been given water and olive oil to wash their feet and wash their hands. And this was an anointing before the meal. This was what everybody did before the meal. And then they would be reclining at the table, 
and they would be given, and then thanks could be given for the meal. So not until they'd been anointed, not until they'd been cleansed, could thanks be given for the meal. So in fact, Jesus not being anointed and not being washed meant that he shouldn't be partaking in the meal with the rest of those people invited. He was being rude. Simon, although he'd invited Jesus into his home, was actually insulting him in the highest way he could. Because everybody else in the room knew what that meant. At the, as the host, Simon should have made a fuss of Jesus, just as he did of the other guests. He was the honoured guest, he was welcomed, he'd been invited. They should have been fussed over equally. But the woman was there. She saw all of that happen. She saw everything that wasn't said to Jesus. She was insulted for him. And as I read this, I found myself getting a bit like, oh yeah, I get that now. This passage is starting to make far more sense. How rude. Like, that's a bit like me walking into somebody's house and then basically just kind of turning the telly up. Do you, do you know what, does anyone ever get that? Do you know, you know when you walk in and, and you just think, I thought I came for a cup of tea, but you're not turning the telly off. A bit rude. It's like that, but a hundred times worse, because basically maybe you've invited, I mean, I was going to say the Archbishop of Canterbury, but I didn't want to play, you know, churchy hierarchy, but you've invited somebody really important, and you said, come, and then they walk in the house, and you're like, yeah, cheers, tea's in the corner. Do you know, like, rude. It made sense. Sorry, maybe it's just me that it made sense to this week, but welcome to my world. <laughs> But why it's so important in this that we know she didn't just barge into the scene is because she saw the insult happen. And that's what her response is. Her response isn't just to the God that she loves, to Jesus, her saviour, the one that she's now come to understand and realise the importance of his existence. That's not just what she's doing when she brings the oil, when she brings the perfume, when she washes his feet. Jesus tells us, from the beginning of the time I entered this house, she has not stopped kissing my feet. She started the minute he walked in the door because she saw what Simon did. And she said, I'm not standing for that. That is not okay. That's my kink. More likely, the woman came simply with oil to say thank you to Jesus. I don't think she was expecting to make such a spectacle of herself. I don't think that was her plan. She was expecting to come in, bring her oil, anoint Jesus' hands, maybe his head, but that would have been possibly a little bit too sexual and a bit too far for her because everyone knew what she did, and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's what she was expecting to do. But instead, she walked into a room full of insult and was devastated. She didn't bring a towel. She wasn't prepared for this. She, she actually did the most um, humiliating thing she could do, which was take her headscarf off, because her hair fell on Jesus' feet. She wiped his feet with her hair. Women in that culture did not show their hair, ever. It was not a thing. Never showed their hair. So she took her headscarf off to clean his feet with her hair. I've got excited, sorry. So yeah, she can't say to the Pharisees, what the heck do you think you're doing? The sort of thing I do. Excuse me, I'm standing up for the oppressed here. Don't be so rude. She can't do that. But what she can do is say to Jesus, I see you. I love you. I want to do this. I want to treat you the way you should be treated. So there's a huge challenge. I've sort of not liked writing this sermon because I don't like it. I don't like challenges from Jesus. But I felt there was a big challenge for us, two big challenges. One is, is thinking, how do I respond to Jesus? That's the natural reaction to this, this passage, isn't it? 
This woman couldn't stand to see Jesus insulted. She makes a complete spectacle of herself. How do we welcome Jesus when we see him not welcomed somewhere? How do we react? I don't react particularly like this woman, if I'm honest. I don't particularly make that big stand, which is shocking, considering I've normally got a collar on. You got me dressed down today. I should stand up for him when I hear him not being welcomed in a place. Particularly in a place, the Pharisees were religious men. Particularly when he's not welcomed in a place that calls itself religious. In a country, maybe, that says it's a religious country. How do we stand up for Jesus? But also, if this is how she welcomed Jesus, and Jesus says, love your neighbour, and we want to be like Jesus, how do we welcome our neighbour? We could go in half-heartedly. We could, are we the TV turning up type of people? I mean, to be honest, do we even just leave the TV on? It doesn't even need to be turned up. Do we just leave it on and ignore our, pe- our visitors? I doubt that, because we're quite nice people. It doesn't mean that we need to put a feast on every time somebody comes to our house. But it does mean that we make them feel valued and seen and heard just like this lady did, just like this woman did for Jesus. Honouring the guest, as Simon should have done, shows the value that you put in them. They feel included. Community grows. If we contrast the actions of this woman to the Pharisee, it can throw the light, throws light onto the dangers that we can fall into when we welcome others. That we just... We talk very glibly about doing life together sometimes. And sometimes that can become a bit dulled because we think we don't have to put any effort in for each other because, to be fair, what I do at home with my family when I pull my joggers on and I shut the front door because I don't want to go out again, I shouldn't treat my valued friends, my church family, those people God is calling me to, like that. They should get my best because God has called me to love them. Jesus invited us to the most extravagant meal that gives us an example of how we can live. The meal of communion that we're going to share in a little bit. This fellowship meal embodies and reminds us of how we can be welcomed, of how Jesus welcomes all to his table through extravagant love and puts Jesus at the centre of it. So I wonder this week, my challenge for me this week, and I extend it to you, is who can we welcome extravagantly? Who's on our mind that we haven't given attention to that maybe we should? Who have we seen who's not been welcomed somewhere? Maybe we've kept them at arm's length. Now, there can be lots of reasons for that. And I'm not saying we should do anything that we're not comfortable with and all those kind of things, but take the challenge of the lady with the perfume. Who can we love extravagantly? And maybe we need to welcome Jesus extravagantly. Where have we been where Jesus hasn't been welcomed? Do we need to stand out and show that we welcome him as extravagantly as this lady? It's a challenge that's hard, but actually is full of blessing because this woman, in the end, her sins were forgiven. The highest honour was given to her. The best gift she could receive was given to her. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your gift to us of family, of friends, We thank you so much, Lord, that we do get the chance to be you to other people. Father, help us to learn from this interaction with you. This contrast of welcoming.
Lord, show us where we can welcome you more extravagantly, more openly, more generously than we have done before. And Lord, would you point out to us those people that we need to welcome in, to build community with, to show them that they are truly loved, not just tolerated. Give us space in our lives this week, Lord, to do that. Give us space in our hearts to do that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to come and take communion together now, that extravagant meal that we maybe take for granted because we do it all the time. But let's come this morning to the table, accept Jesus' gift, knowing the extravagant love that is behind it and that encourages us to share that love with others.